Hi, I'm Monica, and welcome to my reading vlog for Kingdom of the Feared. So this is book three in the final book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series by Akira Matsukoko, and I'm so excited to get into this book. So very quickly, what this series is about from the first book, we're following Amelia, who is a witch, and she gets wrapped up into the world of demons, and she also accidentally summons a prince of hell, Wrath, and she really wants his help to solve her twin sister's murder. Okay, and the only thing going into this book that I do want is more romance between Wrath and Amelia and the overall resolution of the mystery. I do think this will be a trend in my reading vlogs that I will be including spoilers. I think maybe later on I will try not to include as many spoilers. But since, again, this is the last book in the series, I'm just going to speak freely. But do stay tuned until the end of this vlog for a spoiler-free mini-review. So skip ahead if you have not yet read Kingdom of the Feared. Anyways, let's just get right to the vlog. Alright, for my first check-in, I already read I'm on chapter 4 and page 50. So far, this book is really easy to read and really quick to read. And right off the bat, we are continuing off from where Kingdom of the Cursed ended. And we find out that Victoria is actually alive and Amelia is like, how are you alive? And to distract herself, Amelia really wants to do the deed with Wrath and complete their marriage bond. So that's what is on her mind. But we also learn how Amelia herself is also gaining more powers and they're quite connected to Wrath. So I do have my copy of Kingdom of the Fear here. Other than that, we also encounter some new villains, one of them being Victoria and her being off the rails this book and how she came back from the dead so but she also has control of the werewolves so that's interesting oh and one of the big factors of this book is that it is reading much more new adult than young adult and i think when this series first came out it was marketed as young adult but it's definitely bordering new adult i don't know i feel like there's a missing genre for those of us that are in our early 20s and i think that book publishers do something there but definitely the spice level is going up in this book and I'm really excited to see what happened from this point on. Welcome to my second check-in for this vlog and so far I am halfway through this book. I am right on page 200 and on chapter 15. So right off where I just finished from the last clip, Amelia and Wrath, they finally do the deed and they uh, get really spicy and they complete their marriage bond but that happened and we also get more progression in finding out what Amelia is and we find out that her and Victoria are actually goddesses of vengeance. So Amelia is the goddess of fury so that makes Amelia and Wrath compatible in their anger and we discover that Amelia does have more power. She has the ability to have vines coming out of her <laughs> as well as the power of fire. But the question now is why isn't Amelia immortal? And I really think that she will become immortal and we will figure out how she comes to that by the end of the book. Because I don't think she wants to give up Wrath at all at this point, even with her sister trying to kill her. And I think everything in this series is going to come to a nice conclusion because we are getting characters from book one now appearing in this book and that includes Amelia and Victoria's family. As it turns out, her so-called family is part of the reason why Amelia and Victoria didn't remember who they were as being the goddesses of vengeance, of house vengeance. So they were the eighth missing house in hell. With that, I think Amelia is like feeling so much betrayal. But for myself so far in this book, to be honest, I'm not really thoroughly attached to the mystery. And I really just loved the romance aspect of this book. But I do have to give credit to the author for continuing to make up those mysteries and revelations that we are having. Although sometimes it can be a little bit disjointed, I think, between each scenes. Because Amelia does have visions and within those visions she is meeting Victoria. It sometimes just feels a little bit jarring when Amelia is just ripped out of her body to have those other scenes. At this point in the book, I'll be rating it a 3.5, but let's see how it goes for the rest. I just finished Kingdom of the Feared, and I would say the second half of this book was okay. There were some moments that felt 
rushed to me and also anticlimactic with all the plot points that we have going on in this book. This includes where Victoria broke the spell lock on Amelia and Amelia is now immortal and she regains her memories of her house and her past life. There wasn't much reaction from Amelia. She was just like indifferent. She was like, okay, shouldn't you be reacting a little bit more when you're now in your full power and you have your full goddess status again? When she felt indifferent about that change in her, I also felt indifferent. I was like, um, okay, let's move on to the next scene. And this happened the same with the war with the witches against greed. I know this was a really minor scene, but I felt there was a lot of telling instead of showing and how Amelia was losing her humanity at that point. I'm like, there was no dialogue. There's no inner monologue. Amelia is thinking, okay, I lost my humanity and I think that's just part of me being my old goddess self again. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> it really did feel like Amelia just didn't care. I guess that comes with her becoming immortal again, that indifference. But I do like how Amelia realized that she doesn't want to be feared, but she wants to be respected. Um, she wants to end the cycle of the war and the hate in the circles. Also, breaking Wrath's scene was quite an emotional scene. And I also disliked when Amelia lost her powers, but then she regains them in the end through Wrath and their marriage bond. And to wrap everything up nicely was the coronation sequence with the ball and everyone getting gathered again. We also get more resolution of clearing Victoria's name that she didn't commit that murder of the werewolf. And the werewolf Vesta slash Marcel is actually alive. And we also have all curses being broken. And with the coronation scene, I really did like the brothers approaching Wrath and Amelia and acting like a family. And our main couple finally find their happiness after, I would say, years and years of anguish and anger. Overall, it was a satisfying conclusion to this book and series. Anyways, I'm going to go on to my concluding thoughts. I did want to do a mini review on Kingdom of the Feared. So first of all, the pacing was really good in the beginning and we got a lot of nice scenes but then once we reached the halfway point of the book the pacing was kind of off and some scenes just felt disjointed to me overall in the book i'm talking about like the visions and kind of jumping from one setting to another it felt like it didn't have any rhyme or reason to it but of, there was purpose to jump to certain settings and stuff but overall it did feel disjointed to me um the settings in the underworld was really fun to read about still and visiting all the different princes courts. The plot itself was somewhat interesting. I did find myself at times wanting to just move on to the next scene already but like the winning point for me would be the characters and with Amelia she is finally growing her powers. She's becoming more than what she first thought she was but I did think when huge pivotal things are happening to her she was brushing them off like they were nothing and she was like indifferent to them. There was some hint of emotion when she was going through those things. Wrath the Demon Prince is still this we know from book one. He still has his anger and fury and he also has his icy powers still but he does show some development of his emotions towards Amelia and their romance definitely turned up the spice level in this book and I really think the new adult genre needs to be more prominent in traditional publishing because it's not really seen in traditional publishing but I think that's another discussion for another day. Overall I think there were some moments I did want to put down the book but then the overall ending was quite satisfying and it wrapped up things nicely from even characters and events from book one. I do love Wrath and Amelia together but at times it felt Amelia's growth was only from their relationship and not on her own. But I do think Wrath does let Amelia to do her own thing and that's good. But overall, I did really enjoy this series. I had a lot of fun reading the series, figuring out all the mysteries, curses, and with hot demon princes around, and seeing how Amelia came to be to where she is at the end of the series. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. And if you did, I hope you can give me a big huge thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below. See y'all in my next video. Bye!